In this video, we're going to cover the enhanced data labels that came out as part of Power BI's December 2023 updates. We're going to go through some of its basic features, as well as an example on how you can implement it for yourself. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as part of the December 2023 feature updates, the Power BI team has extended the way that you can add data labels and context to your data labels in your Power BI reports. So at the moment, this works for bar charts and ribbon charts, so we're gonna go through it today with an example so I can show you how that would look like. So here we are in my data model, which as usual, we're using a subset of the Northwind data set, which is a company that sells grocery goods internationally. The bar chart here in the middle shows us the product sales for each of these products that we have selected based on the categories that are selected here on the slicer on the left. So the bar chart simply shows us which products sold the most. The slicer at the top just allows us to change the context of these bar charts to see, for example, what sold the most in a specific month. And we're gonna go back to this later. So for now, what we're going to do is just explore the data labels and what they have actually changed. So just clicking the bar chart here and let's just go back to the format pane and uh, looking at this at first glance, nothing's really changed. So if we go and expand on the data labels here, which normally you can also expand on this and enable it, which will just give you the data labels on your bar charts itself. But you will notice that there are far more customization options available to you. So let's just go through some of these options. So the first thing that you'll notice is that you have this option for series, which means that, well, at the moment it's letting us select just one. And that's because we don't have any legend in this bar chart. But as soon as we add a legend, so for example, let's just add region description here in our legend, uh, which just gives that um, extra level of detail on our bars, on our stacked bar. As you can see here, it lets you select different series or apply to all the series. So this is actually very powerful because this means that you can customize individual series data labels or adjust how they look like or adjust what story they're telling by selecting it from here. So this is actually really, really powerful. But for now, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on one series because there's quite a few to go through. I'm just going to remove that legend for now. And then let's have a look at some of the other options here available to you. So we have some things here like orientation. Let me just make something smaller here. Yeah. So orientation, which is currently horizontal. If you change it to vertical, this saves space horizontally. If you have a lot of information in your data label, you can have it vertical or horizontal as you like. The position is, it existed before. It's automatic setup. So if it's within the bar or outside the bar, you can adjust this here or just leave it auto. The overflow text and the optimized label display. This is if you have a lot of labels that can't fit in the visual and how they would react if there is less space. You can enable or disable that if you want to tweak and fine tune how your data labels are being shown on the charts. And now here we are at the bottom. So we have, you will notice something familiar if you have been playing around with the new card visual. It's going to look very familiar because this whole idea of title value detail exists here. So that means you can add three layers of, let's say, description or insights to your labels that didn't exist before. So previously, you only had access to value, which is what is being shown on the actual data labels. You can adjust its font, how it's colored, transparency, how if it's blank. But now you have two other things here that you can customize and change independently, which is, I think, is a really good addition. So let's say, for example, at the moment, we're only showing the total sales by product for August 1996. However, maybe we want to add some more details to this other information that is not just about sales. Let's say we want to add order quantity. So how many products quantity of that product was ordered in that month and 
maybe we want to show how that changed month on month. So how did that volume of order change from compared to previous months? So compared to July 1996, we want to show that as a percentage. This three options is basically all you'll need and a bit of DAX code. So let's start by sorting out the DAX code first because that will just make this process a lot smoother. So let's start by just uh, creating some new DAX measures here. Just gonna create one. We're just gonna call this one value, which is, I'm just gonna name it where we're going to put it so I don't get confused. So I'm just gonna call this one orders and then just append it with the, where is that? Ampersand, uh -huh, I lost you. Orders like this. And the orders measure, by the way, is simply a measure that calculates or just sums up the quantity data that already exists in our data model. So that this one is just the label for our value. The next one is gonna be for the detail, which is the order comparing the quantity of order from the current month to the previous month. So we're gonna call this one detail again, so that I don't get confused. We're gonna start by declaring a few variables here. We're gonna first get the, uh, the previous order quantity. So we're gonna calculate orders previous month, use the calendar date like this. And then we're gonna declare another one, which is just, I'm just gonna call it percent. And this bit just calculates the actual percentage between those two months. So we're gonna use divide. We're gonna use orders, which is the current month compared to the previous month. So this will just give us a percentage value. Now I'm gonna wrap this up with the format. And this basically just makes sure that we are showing the percentage in the right format. So I'm just gonna use zero and percent. That is the format of our percentage. Cool. So now we're gonna start our return and we're just gonna add some if statements here just to account for things going wrong. Like for example, we might have products that don't have anything sold on the previous month. So we just wanna make sure that we are not showing some values on those. I'm gonna say if the previous value is blank, we'll just keep it empty else we'll do whatever we want. So we're going to create another if statement. Well, actually, before we do an if statement, we just want to show the percentage if it's not empty. And then I'm going to add a space here, then add our if statement. So the if statement is if the orders is greater than if the current is greater than the previous one, we need to add or use an arrow. So I want to show an arrow to signify if it's going up or down. Very simple. So we're using a windows dots to bring up the emoji board here. And I think that should be everything that we need to do. So now we've created uh, all of the DAX code that we need. Uh, let's start by or let's, let's assign them to the right field wells. So let's just enable these three title value and detail. The title, it's using the series name, which is the sales. We don't actually want that. We want custom and we want to set this value ourselves. So we want to set the sales there, which is fine. It's doubling up with the value It's fine because we're going to change that anyway. Value, we're going to change that into the value here, which is giving us the number of orders in that, uh, in that column, which is great. And then on the detail, add date data, select detail here. So here we go. So as you can see where it has, the product has sales on the previous month, it shows the percentage. When there's none, it just keeps it empty, which is what we wanted. Now let's try to use one of the conditional formatting options that they provide to you to make these changes and colors pop a bit more. So in the details section here, you will notice, and not just in the details section, but a few other places, you can conditionally format some of its features. So here we have one that adjusts the color of our detail. We're gonna simply just select that FX, choose the detail here, not gradient, but let's change it based on uh, rules. Choose detail. And since it's text, we can simply adjust the color of that detail based on certain parameters. Now to keep the logic simple, I'm just gonna look for a text and say if that text exists there, if it, that text contains character, use this color. 
as its font color. Otherwise, use a different color. So in this case, what I know is that the detail measure that we've created always has the up arrows or down arrows. So that's what we're going to be looking for. So if it has an up arrow, the font color is green. If it has a down arrow, it needs to be red. Pretty simple. Hit OK. There we go. So as you can see, it just gives you the color, which makes it easy for users to see what change has happened in that bar. So lastly, so there are a few other options here. The background, which, for example, it's a good thing to add if you have, let's say, instances like this where you have your labels going over the bars and the bars being too dark or not contrasting in the right way with the text color that you're using. It can be difficult to see. So by adding a background color, it just makes it a little bit easier to read your data labels. So for example, here, let's just if you adjust the colors accordingly, either white or whatever you want to use, it just makes your labels a little bit more legible. And then lastly, here we have a layout, which just uh, adjusts the layout of the data labels from multi-line, which is what it is now, to a single line, which is basically just having the title, the label, and detail in one line. Now, you might prefer to have a multi-line, um, especially if you have a lot of characters in your data labels. Because, for example, here, if you have too many, you know, it will just, it won't fit and it will just not show it because it, there's too many data labels in the screen. Or you can adjust the labels vertically, which is also an option. But for now, we're just going to keep it uh, multi-line like this. And that pretty much covers the extended data label customization that you can do with Power BI visuals, like on bar charts and on ribbon charts. I'm pretty sure I covered everything, but if I didn't and I missed something, I will leave the full blog post uh, link in the description box below so you can check it out yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't in order to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.